Everybody was talking last year about how much older our favorite rock stars are. I mean, everybody was talking about it. No longer are the big stars at the energetic age of 20. Now, they're over 30 at this point, some 35, even past 40. But these mature adults still had plenty of energy to take on the grueling task of touring the country thanks to these old fogies along with some of the uh, younger folks. 1986 had more than its share of big concert tours. Here's a look at some of the most successful. years, no one tour dominated 1986. Instead, a series of major artists went out on the road. The biggest winners were ZZ Top, who used Egyptian technology to earn $10 million in June, July, and August. Van Halen packed them in, too, earning $9.5 million on their summer tour. Obviously, fans didn't take long to accept the new Hagerized Halen. 30 seconds into the first song, I got hit with about 20 big giant banners rolled up. And so as I start unrolling them, looking at them, David Lee who, <clears throat> you know, some other rude statements, and it really, you know, it, I can honestly say it encouraged me. Plenty of encouragement on his Eat em and Smile tour. At five months and counting, it was definitely one of the year's longest and craziest, and it was sort of a multi-leveled performance, too. Come listening for the guitar hero. We have that. You come looking for dancing feet. We have that. You want Dave close to you? Yes, we have that. That's life. But that's not all. Van Halen and David Lee Roth battled it out on the charts and in the press with a no-holds-barred media feud. Well, of course the Van Halens are going to be angry at me, you know, because it's a big divorce, man. It's a big divorce. Who came first? Who said the first? You said this about me, and then I said, no, you said it first. It's going to go back and forth, and it reads like wrestling, man. It reads like Hulk Hogan, you know, and it's colorful. And hey, I'll read this stuff. It's colorful. Sammy Hagar, on the other hand, is upset with me because he knows I'm better than he is. Bob Dylan had Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers backing him up on a much-anticipated world tour. They played 31 cities in America together for almost a million fans. Dylan's first trip around the country in five years. Bob Seger is another veteran who hit the road again, and Neil Young returned to rock and roll by taking Crazy Horse out on one of the year's Stranger Tours. When you hold off from doing something for a long time, it makes it better when you do do it. I mean, it's just the same with everything. The Monkees turned 20 this year, and their U.S. tour was nothing short of a phenomenon. They played almost 200 shows during 86, and one of them made history as long-lost monkey Mike Nesmith rejoined them on stage. We were very, very pleased to have him here, and uh, it was an incredible thrill. Yeah, it was. What an incredible thrill. <laughs> Rap music took over the national spotlight as Run DMC headlined the hugely successful Raising Hell tour. It sold out from coast to coast and the guys discovered new ways to spend all the money they were making. We made 100000 in Philly. $100,000. 33, 33, 33. Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz. And this year, you just couldn't keep a good piano man down. Billy Joel crossed the bridge from fatherhood to the stage. Steve Winwood found higher love on his first U.S. tour in 12 years. And Elton John came out of retirement stunning fans with his energy and his wardrobe. The audience love it, you know. They, I come on this stuff and they just go crazy. I get a five-minute standing ovation for the clothes. Speaking of unique clothes, the video at number 51 is about a fashion attachment some people may like to see popular in 1987. From one of the bands with a big tour last year, here is Velcro Fly, courtesy of ZZ Top. <laughs> <laughs> 